Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Michaels.com. Today we're going to do the bobble cowl together. This is a corner to corner technique which I've never seen done before and it is actually the corner to corner when she's wearing it. So what I'm going to be able to show you today is how to do these beautiful bobbles just like so. You can use this concept for even making blankets if you really wanted to. You only need one ball of Karen Cake regular yarn and a five and a half size eye crochet hook in order to play today. This video has sound alerts added. When you hear this sound it will be your signal that the segment is finishing up. Press stop and crochet the instructions and then press play again to continue along in your project. So today's project is using Karen Cakes. This is the regular format and it's also a brand new color. So on the back here this is called Blackberry Moose and when you turn it over you can see all the beautiful colors that you're gonna get involved with. Because it is a corner to corner it's working up on an angle on this particular model and let me show you another photo and I can prove that to you. So the cowl is a permanent circle that's sewn and your head just goes up through the bottom and out through the top and then it kind of scrunches down and it gives the look that you see that the model's wearing. So as I told you it is corner to corner so you can see that the colors do go up on an angle and that's what produces a really nice look when you're wearing it so it's not so uniform looking. So what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be building it out so when I look at it from this point of view I kind of always look at it from this that I'm growing it out and you can see it changes colors on its own. So it does change colors midway through things but it's not a deal breaker from the way that it's being worked out here on the cowl. So we have a diagram that's available to you. It's gonna flip your mind but it's probably the best diagram I've ever seen for corner to corner concept and we're gonna be reviewing that and taking the mystery out of that too. So here we have a diagram and it is a full page like so and don't panic attack. It's really not the hard and it's probably the best corner to corner diagram I've ever seen in my life. And I'm not just saying that. It's actually quite awesome. So and the reason for it is that this corner to corner is not a square. It's actually a rectangle and this particular whole thing describes the rectangular motion easily. So what each one of these ones are here is popcorn and those popcorns is what makes it pop out like the bobble, right? So what we're gonna do is that we start off in the very corner and with the, this row and the next row are all just regular single, are like regular corner to corner concept. And then it's not until this row that we start the popcorn work in order to create it. Now corner to corner always has you grow up on one side and grow on the other one. So you can see you had one box and then the next stairs we had to add a stairway here and here so that gives you two and then we just keep adding more and more and it grows out equally from the corner. The thing about it is that this is a rectangular motion. So what happens eventually is that you're going to hit the maximum length that you want across but because it's rectangular you still need to grow it up. So not only are you just continuing to always grow on the one side to create the rectangle, this side has to stop one early to get that rectangular motion to go up. So even though one side is continuing to build a block on this side, this one stops in the last block here without building any more, many more further just like you see down here. So this is kind of the starting and then this is what happens when you're in the rectangular motion of moving it forward. So once you're satisfied with the whole length of your whole project, so once it gets up here, then you're gonna need to come and bring it close to, to close to this corner. So what happens is this side has always been building up on the, on the out blocks. Okay, so you haven't been building out, you've just been going up and this side is no longer gonna go up and it's gonna come in. So both of them are gonna head towards the final corner together and then this final diagram here is basically the same as this. It's just showing it more, more like as a separate piece and it gets more and more narrow. So with this particular corner to corner concept like most corner to corner it always starts off really quick and then it slows down as you're in the maximum width and then you're gonna build up and then eventually you're gonna get up to this level here and then you're gonna eventually come to this corner over here. So the thing about it is that right at the very beginning here rows number one and two here are just regular corner to corner and then we start our popcorns after that in order to go for the remainder. So the very back of the cowl that you cannot see the model wearing actually has uh, these three blocks without the bobbles. If you would like to challenge yourself and make those bobbles that's completely up to you but I'm gonna uh, demonstrate it exactly how it shows in today's pattern. So it's actually not so hard once you get used to it and then what I'm gonna show you today is I'm gonna show you how to build out. I'm going to show you just to remind you how to make it the rectangle as we build up and then I'm going to show you how we get smaller and then finally at the final point. So let's begin. We're going to create a slip knot and this is the very bottom corner on the right hand side of the diagram and we're going to create a slip knot and begin. So we have to start off by chaining a six. So just go chaining one, 
two and three and then I pinched the third one four, five and six. And why did I do that? Because right where I'm pinching the third one is the very first double crochet. So you're gonna wrap the hook and right where I'm pinching just slide your thumb out of the way and just go into the back loop only and you're going to double crochet. And you're gonna double crochet the remaining two chains that are left. It's all about how you start these that make it a lot easier to, to be able to do. And then this is the very first block of your corner to corner. So there's no popcorn involved here. So this is what it looks like. So this chain or this uh, string right here is the bottom corner of your project. So now I want you to turn your project like so and now we're going to begin uh, set up row number two. So to do this watch we're going to chain three. So one, two, three and then pinch it on the third one four, five and six and right where I'm pinching wrap the hook and move your thumb out of the way and double crochet into that same one. So instead of just chaining six if you just do it sequentially like that you don't have to count as much. So you're just going to just double crochet the remaining chains that are there. So there's a total of three double crochets in a row. And then what you're going to do is just fold this up and right into this space right here you're going to a slip stitch like so and then chain up three, one, two, three and then put three more double crochets right into this chain space. This is just like regular double cro uh, corner to corner with double crochet. So now you're at the end of row number two. So you see the first box and then this is row number two. You can see the two boxes here and now we're gonna begin the first row of doing the popcorn. So let's begin to do that next. So let's turn our work and let's begin to do that. So in order to do this we're going to uh, you have to really pay attention to this part by the way. So you're going to chain a total of six but do it like I said. So chain three. So one, two, three and pinch the third one four, five and six. So what you're going to do is you're gonna wrap the hook and slide your thumb out of the way and I want you to double crochet into that one. Okay and now the next one there's only two left. The next one is gonna be a popcorn. This is how you do a popcorn. So wrap the yarn and going into the next chain pull through and pull through two and two and I want you to do five double crochets into that same stitch. And you're gonna say well that's not looking very popcornish. Watch you have to have some patience here my friends. So you have five double crochets in a row right into the same one. Okay so you're gonna have your chain, the first double crochet that went in and then the next five are part of the popcorn. So remove the hook out and coming into the, the first one of the five right into the top. Grab that yarn okay and what I want you to do is push this out. Okay so push it out and then pull through and that just made the popcorn just pop onto the other side and then to lock it with a chain and then you're gonna double crochet into the next one, next final chain. So the popcorn just happened to pop out the back. So you have to pay attention to where your popcorn is popping at all times. So let's go to the next one. So fold it up and just slip stitch into this space right here. So I want you to chain up three and now we're going to begin again. So the next five are gonna be into this same space. So one, this is creating a popcorn, two, three, four and five and then pull out the hook going into the first one of five. Remember this is the top of the chain. Going into the first one of the five. Use your thumb, push the popcorn out and put the loop back on and pull through and lock it with a chain one and then come back into the same one and double crochet once again. 
that kind of locks it. So when you notice that when we did the very first one that we double crocheted first into the chain, the next one we did a popcorn and then a double crochet but all the remaining for the ones that step up we just chain up three, you put in your five to make your double or your popcorn and then finish it off with one double crochet by itself. So now continuing to go up the stairs you go into the space, slip stitch it and then chain up three. So one, two, three, and now you're gonna do your five double crochets for your popcorn. So one, two, three, four, and five. Pull it off the hook going into the first one of the group of five using your thumb to push out and pull through. Lock it with the chain one and then going into the same one just double crochet. So when you turn it around your your popcorn is gonna be all in the back. So let's uh, move up one more row. So let's uh, go up. So we're gonna chain up th uh, a total of uh, six but let's do three only. So one, two, and three. Pinch, four, five, six. Going into moving your thumb to where you pinched and I want you to double crochet first. And then the next one a chain is going to be a popcorn so there's gonna be five double crochets in that one. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now watch the popcorn is now facing you. So you're still going to go into the first one of the group of five but this time you have to make sure the popcorn goes towards you. So lean it towards you and then pull through and the popcorn will stay on the same side that you're working on. Chain one to lock it into position and in the final chain you're going to double crochet. So in this row instead of the popcorn being pushed to the back we're gonna push it, we're gonna push it forward. So then just lock it and going into the next space here with a single or with a slip stitch chain up three, one, two, three and in the same space do your group of fives. Double crochet. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, drop it going into the first one of the five. Make sure the bobble is going to come forward so just push it out forward before locking it. Okay, and then chain one to lock and then into the same space double crochet one last time and that will hold that into position. So now that bobble is on the front side too. So you continue to work your way up just looking for the space, slip stitch, chain up three and then put in your five. So one, two, three, four, and five and then drop it going into the first one. Make sure the bobble comes towards you. Lock it and then with that chain and then just double crochet in the final. So continuing to come up. So this is gonna be the last time for this one here. So chain up three and do five. So one, two, three, four and five. Going into the first one make sure the bobble pops out towards you. Lock it and then double crochet into the same one. So now you can see that the, the bobbles are still on the same side. So the flat, the other side is flat because that's the back. So now you're gonna start up another row. So this is how you continue to grow both rounds. So you're gonna chain up six and the third one you're gonna come back and you're gonna do your double crochet. So let's just review that again. So one, two, three, pinch, four, five, six and right where I pinched is going to be the first double crochet and then the next one is your bobble. So what's different about this bobble compared to the last one? If you said that the bobbles are away from me then the answer is correct. So when you go to finish this, this one you wanna make sure that the bobbles are being pushed away from you to keep it on the same side. So it's important to recognize what side your bobbles are on and adjust as you go because it's kind of a permanent situation, right? So drop it going into the first one of the group of five. 
make sure the bobble stays out towards the back. So use your thumb and push it backwards. Bring your yarn through. Lock it and then double crochet into the next chain. And then you start down again. So just get the next one up and so on. So you just keep working your way like that and the bobbles will work themselves out. And let me just get my other sample here. So you just get bigger and bigger as you go. So here's my other sample that I'm working on and you can see all the bobbles are facing up and this is the underside and the back it's flat. And so what you wanna do is you wanna keep growing it out until the one side here hits 15 inches. And then once it hits 15 inches then this side stops growing and we then start moving in a rectangular format. So this side has to continue to grow up in order to have the rectangle but this one has to stop from growing in order to go in the rectangular motion. So what I'm gonna do now in this part of the tutorial is that I'm gonna show you how I come back and I'm gonna stop on top of this block here and what we're going to do is continue to grow one side but this side is no longer gonna grow. So let's begin to do that now. So in the diagram right where we are now is that this side we've determined it's not gonna be four but it's gonna be 15 inches and then we're gonna stop it. So now I'm gonna move on to this section here in the diagram where this side stops growing and this side continues to grow in order to go in a rectangular straight up. So now I've determined that it's wide enough. It's not wide enough here on camera but this is just a tutorial sample to show you how to do that. So we have to continue to grow up the side. So once you determine that the one side here is 15 inches then we start moving up and so now I'm gonna treat the very first row as if this row is gonna grow up still and then this one's gonna stop early in order to get that rectangular shape. So remember like we always did so we chained up a total of six. So after the third one pinch and then you do your bobbles then all the way back to the other side. So we double crochet the third one and then we bobble into the next one. So one, sorry I should say popcorn. Bobble is what they call it because that's what it looks like. So three, four and five and then once you get your five in drop it. So where is your bobbles? It's facing towards you so when you go into the very first one of the group of five. So I wanna keep these bobbles so push it out towards you lock it and then double crochet into the next one. So I want you to continue all the way across on here and then I'm gonna see you on the other side of this row. Okay, so I'll see you over here and you're not gonna add anything extra to the outside here. We're gonna stop right above this one and then I'll show you how to go in that motion to go straight up. So let's uh, meet you there in just a moment. So now I've come almost all the way across and now I'm coming to this side and this is the last bobble that I'm here. So normally if I was growing it out even further I'd, I'd go on top of this one and create another one on the other side. But because I want this to be a rectangle I want to stop on top of this one. So the last stitch that I'm about to do is in the top of this section here. So you're gonna chain up three and then you do your bobble. So one, two, three, four and five and the bobbles are facing towards me. So when I go to do this I wanna make sure I'm folding it in a way. Comes towards me, lock it and then double crochet in. And now this is it. So what I have to do is that I take the final one here and I just slip stitch it and I'm done. So now I'm no longer growing up on this side of the bobble. I'm just staying on top. So then when we start the next row we have to turn our work and we have to slip stitch our way to get ourselves to this first one above here. So now this is gonna grow out flat this way but when it comes to this side, this side is gonna still continue to grow to have the rectangular format. So you're going to slip stitch your way to the point that you're going to get yourself to that space. So right there, okay? And then you continue again. So because you're now growing out this way. You only have to chain six when you're expanding but because you're not expanding anymore you're only gonna chain three. So one, two, three and then you work what you normally have done uh, then going up the other side. So you're going to bobble. So just remember the chain six is only when you're expanding to make more boxes but when you're not expanding you don't have to bother at all. So then once you have your five in there, drop it. Now you can see the bobbles are away from me so I wanna 
push out with my thumb, make sure the bobble stays on the other side, lock it and then double crochet back in. So when you come up all the way to the other side, so let's just slip stitch the next one and move up. So you can see that it's creating the rectangular shape just like you want. So when we come up to this side which I'll meet you there in a moment, we continue to grow it out on this side to keep the rectangular motion moving this way. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I've now come all the way across and you can see here's where I was. Okay and you can see that I'm growing it out still. So in order to keep it a rectangle, if I stopped here then both sides will then be going in at the same time. But if I wanted a rectangle, I have to build up on top of this block. So you keep it going as usual if, 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 if you're doing a rectangular format. And you would do this regular uh, corner to corner as well. So it just happens to be a bobble which is really neat. I've never seen anything like this. I think it's a great little design. Takes a bit of getting used to. But once you get uh, to the rhythm of it, it actually moves along pretty quickly. It uses up more yarn as well um, if you're doing that because it has the texture and, but it's really quite awesome. So the next part of this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to decrease both sides. So if you want to continue this motion, so in order to keep the rectangle going is that you, you build up on top of this block. So chaining up six again, you build up on top of this block and then you come all the way down and you stop right above this one and then you then continue with what you know. So you get it to the length that you need in order to make it happen. So it's approximately 30 inches then from the base here all the way to the other side of the rectangle before. So you have to get 30 inches from here to here and then you can start decreasing in order to hap, ha, make that happen. So in order to do the decreasing, what do you think that we're gonna do? Well we just turn our work and when you're ready to decrease, all you just have to do is that we just happen to have the bobbles facing towards us, it doesn't matter. And we have to then just slip stitch ourselves in order to get to the first section which is the, the chain space right here. Okay, so this side now is now gonna start going in this motion. And then when we come to this side, we stop on top of this block. So we're gonna chain up three. So you no longer have to worry about chaining sixes anymore because we're no longer growing it and we're just gonna decrease it. So we just have to worry about slip stitching it um, when we go to start a row in order to get ourselves proper to where we need to be. So because the bobbles are towards us, just putting it in, just pop it out with your finger lock it and then double crochet yourself into that same spot and keep on moving. So you're gonna continue this row now and you're going to stop on top of this block and then we're just gonna now move into this motion to coming it to the end. So please continue to do that and I'm gonna leave the rest of this for you and I'm gonna get closer to the point. So just make sure that every time you come around now you're stopping on top of the blocks, no longer growing out anything and you're gonna keep it moving into a point. So as I come up to the other side of this, we are just still continuing to decrease as we go. And the trick is to make sure that you still decrease. I've seen people in corner to corner where they forget they're decreasing and then they end up creating extra boxes. Most times people catch it and then they frog out meaning to rip it out. And some people don't and then it ends up being a mistake down the road. So lock it and then coming into the, the final one and then just slip it to the first space here and you're no longer growing anything out further from that point. So you keep continue this up. So we turn our work and then in order to restart this because we're getting smaller is that we slip stitch our way up here. Just take your time slipping. Sometimes people rush the slipping and it causes the square to not be so square or the rectangle and then you begin again and then you stop on this block here so you no longer get out and you'll see that it will come more and more narrow like that. So now coming close to the end, the yarn transitioned on its own. You can see that it's going up on an angle. So I have three more boxes left. I have two in this row and then one in the final. So I'm going to slip stitch my way then because I'm not no longer growing and I'm taking my time. So I, there's basically three slip stitches in this in each section to take you to that chain three space. And then we just chain up a total of three. So one, two, three and then we bobble Again, so we just put our five double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. And the bobbles are facing away from me, so I just wanna put it into the first one. Use my thumb, push it out. Lock it and then double crochet into the same one. 
go up to the next one, slip stitch and then chain three again. So one, two, three and then bobble again. So five double crochets in a row. So one, two, three, four and five and then drop it. Go into the first one I have this down to a science. <laughs> Trust me I do. It's always when the camera goes on it looks like I'm struggling. So then I just join it to the top of the chain three and now I turn. So I have one more final box left. It's the final one right in the corner. So I have to slip stitch my way to get there first and then go right into that chain three and this is your final box. So one, two, three and then five into there. So one, two, three, four and five. Drop it. The bobbles are facing towards me so I wanna make sure I stick my finger in the back, push it out and then lock it and then double crochet and that's it. So you're just gonna join it to the top here and then that's it. So you're just gonna stop it, weave in your ends and then what you can just do then is that you're going to sew your project together. So just lock it. Use a darning needle in order to lock everything in and then what you're gonna do is just turn it like this and then just using a whip stitch you're going to whip stitch into here all the way across and then that's it. So then what happens then, then you can fold it the other way and then what happens is that you have a beautiful cowl then is like that. So we have the tutorials available on the crochet card for whip stitching. Anything like that that you need and it's really quite an easy thing to do. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Michaels.com as well as the crochet crowd. Enjoy your new bobble cowl. I think it's really quite neat and it's the first time I've ever seen this done with uh, corner to corner. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.